Yo, it's Sway. 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 In the morning. 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 Only on Shade 45. Wake your fuck ass up. Yeah. Bitches. We have Mary Williams here, the author of the book, um, The Lost Daughter. And it tells her story, you know, uh, story. it's a memoir that tells your story, correct? Yes. As a young lady growing yes. up in Oakland, um, being a daughter of a Black Panther, um, which is, you know, how would you describe the Black Panther movement of the 70s? It was um, communal. I mean, we were a family. I, mm -hmm. I don't even think of it as the party. It was a, it was a family. Mm -hmm. All the adults were my comrades. Mm -hmm. They called me comrade. I called them comrade. There was no sense of adults being better than, than we were. Um, and there was a lot of love and a lot of support, and it was intense because it had to be. I mean, the, the whole thing of black power, black beauty, black love, that was like hit at you every day. And it was important because we lived in a time where society said the exact opposite. Yeah. So getting that ingrained in us was important. It wasn't that we hate other people. We actually, I actually had a white science teacher while I was a Panther who, mm -hmm. you know, worked at the school. A lot of people think that black Panthers were separatists and they weren't. They were for all poor people, no matter what color you are. Mm joined together mm, um, mm. and so that's the upbringing that i had and it was a i had a happy childhood early childhood so what about okay it, it, so we were talking schools we're talking um health programs health programs we're ta you know uh we're talking ve being very communal yeah uh but it, that's not how it was portrayed obviously in the media right what role did the media uh play in dividing the panthers you feel well, you know what? It didn't necessarily come from the media. It came straight from the government. J. Edgar Hoover, who was uh -huh. head of the FBI at the time, had a personal crusade against the Black Panthers and declared that they were the number one threat to the internal security of the United States at the time. Mm. Wow. That's and how these high 18 on the list. and 19-year-old, 20-year-old. Yes. 20-year-old 20 year old young black people f empowering themselves and protecting mm -hmm. themselves. They weren't on the offensive. Black, P black Panthers were on the defensive. Mm -hmm. They weren't looking for trouble. They were just protecting their community and who they were. And so from the top down, from the, the U.S. government, um, there was infiltration into the Black Panthers mm -hmm. um, and kind of trying to destroy it from the inside out. But to be fair, I think egos got out of control as well in, okay. in, in the party, too. So there were some internal problems that caused the, the decline and some external problems. And that and it also um, w didn't become as relevant as it was because mm -hmm. laws were being passed. And, you know, so it didn't need to be such a strong militant force you know, at, as, at it, as it once was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and laws were being passed uh, because of partially because of yes, the movement. Right. Yes. 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 All right. And so egos got involved. There was a lot of uh, you hear stories of the divisiveness of the government as well as the media. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh, did, did, did people start going their separate ways? So you I don't to tell us this because you hear so many stories. What's the story yeah. like? How did this divide? I am before I am not the expert on the Black Panthers. I okay. can only talk about it from a, a, a little bit of research that I've okay. done. I wish my uncle was here. He would break it down. OK. He was okay. a captain in the Black Panther Dang, Party. Wow. Yeah, he was a he was a hard core brother my i talk about my uncle in the book and that he was a a captain and my brother and my father also was a was a um a, a very you know important figure in the, in the what's Black your Park uncle's too. name his name is landon williams and then your father's name is randy williams randy williams yeah. okay yeah all right um uh, and you were a child at the time so uh you jane fonda is on the cover of your book mm -hmm. the lost daughter mm -hmm. what is your relationship with jane fonda um, this actually, is Mary Williams, by the way. Right. Well, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. When um, when I was in the Black Panther Party, the, uh, I described the, the Panthers as my family, and it mm -hmm. was a family. They were a huge support to us, not just to us, but a lot of poor families. Being a part of that communal system, you know, we're able to, to strive and survive. But at some point, as the as the party began to decline, my family left the Panthers. My mm -hmm. father was in prison for being a political prisoner at the time. Mm -hmm. And my mother on her own took us out of the party and I went into public into the public school system. So here we were, a mother of six raising six. Yeah, a mother, a single mother raising six children on uh -huh. her own. And it was hard. Uh -huh. um, and so she had to, you know, she succumbed to a lot of the, the pressures that, you know, that came with all of that. And that meant not a very happy childhood for me after that. Yeah. And, um, and, and your sister went into prostitution? My sister um, went into prostitution. Wow. And became a crack addict. That's when crack was on the rise mm -hmm. uh, in poor communities ar around the country. So this was the point. 80s, probably. About the, around the se late 70s, early, early 80s. Early 80s? Yeah. Okay, all right. And um, so I was in public school, um, and my mother had some substance abuse issues herself. Uh -huh. um, and one by one, we there were six girls and one boy. The boy was the youngest. My sister started going away, uh -huh. either, you know, just getting out of the house. And I knew my time was coming. I mean, they were leaving well before they should have left the home. 
Um, and as things got dark for me, I was sexually assaulted as well. Wow. But my uncle, thank God for my uncle, is that he sent me when I was younger, a lot younger, to a children's camp that Jane Fonda ran. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was a supporter of the Panthers. And she said, I'd like to have this camp with all kinds of kids in it. So let's get rich kids, poor kids, Panthers, whatever, just put them in there. So I went to that camp and I met her there and I met other people there. And that became like another family to me every summer. And then when that assault happened and I went back again, they saw a new person. Yeah. They described me as a, look like a candle that was about to go out. Mm-hmm. And she was like, what's going on with you? When I finally told her, she said, well, I want you to come live with me. Let's get your grades up. You'll come and you'll you'll live with me. And I said, all right. And I didn't think twice about it. Jane so. Fonda took you wow. in? She wow. sure did. The daughter of Henry Fonda? The daughter of Henry Fonda, the sister of Peter Fonda. The ex-wife of Ted, <laughs> Ted Turner. Turner. Yeah, Ted Damn. Turner was my stepfather for 10 years, and it's, I still consider him my father. Wow, Ted wow. Turner is your stepfather? He is. He definitely is. And so you write about all this in your book, I The write, Lost Daughter. I write about it all in there. All in there. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45.